Welcome back, everyone. Today, I'm going to be talking about 3D printer bed leveling, or I think more correctly, tramming, as well as how to get a really good first layer on every print you make. So I'm going to kind of chop this video in a couple different segments. First, I'm going to talk about the build surface and getting um, a good first layer surface finish. Oh, and we are also going to look at um, fixing a warped bed because my bed is quite warped. And then after that, I'm going to talk about how to tram out the bed and make it nice and parallel to the print head. And that will result in a good first layer and kind of circle back to the build material. So I'm going to chop this into sections. You'll see chapters down below. Skip to what you'd like to see. For now, though, we're going to head over to the bench so we can get an up-close look at these um, first layers on these parts. So here's a small collection of parts I've printed so far. And when I first started doing this, I was using the original build surface for the 3D printer. This was the original build surface. Again, this is a, just a basic Ender 3. And this is their removable print bed. It's pretty flexible. Um, and it has a rough textured surface. And that leaves what I think is actually a pretty nice rough textured surface on the bottom of the part. And I like that because it kind of matches the roughness of the top of the part, so the bottom and the top are more similar. Then, after that, I switched over to this material. This is G10 or FR4 or Gorolite. And it is basically just circuit board material. Um, it's fiberglass laminations with some resin. Um, I bought this off McMaster Car for about 12 bucks, and it came as a one square foot section, so 12 inches by 12 inches. Then I had to cut it down to roughly 9 by 9 to match the Ender 3 print bed. One note on that, um, just measure out what you want, then use a box cutter, a really sturdy box cutter, to score on one side, then score on the other side. Because if you do not score both sides thoroughly, you'll end up with some delamination when you go to snap it off. So um, definitely be aware of that. The kind of surface finish you can expect is something like that. Really nice. Now you can see I have some under extrusion right here and right here. But this is before I had the my bed perfectly leveled and trammed. Once I got it perfectly level and trammed, I got parts that look like this. And I have some, you know, more close-up macro shots that I'll fill in right here. And as you can see, those turned out pretty well. Here is a Thanos um, bust that I did. Um, a little bit of under extrusion in here, but that was more from a not so great first layer because of tramming. This is the only part I've done since the, uh, the tramming, and I think the results are much better. This is a print duct, or a, sorry, a fan duct that I printed really really rough and fast. I just wanted this thing out as fast as I could get it. Uh, so you can see a lot of print artifacts. Not a great print, but I just want a fan duct to uh, to experiment with for better cooling and then with this thing I'll make some better um, parts and make a better version of this. On this one you can also see that first layer and some of this isn't perfect like on this edge over there, but on this end it's a little more squished. So that's the kind of surface finishes you can expect with this build surface. The other nice thing about this build surface is the parts, the, the first layer sticks down like glue. It, it is very difficult to get the filament to not stick to the surface when it's warm. But as soon as it cools off, it pops right off just like that. It's beautiful. Uh, the original Ender print surface... Um, I had a really hard time getting parts to consistently stick down correctly, but then they also had a hard, uh, slightly harder time pulling off at the end. Um, and some 
will never come off. So that's why I really like this. It's really cheap and it is a beautiful build surface. Now let's go back over to the machine and look at how I trammed the machine and got everything nice and parallel. So now we're back at the machine. I'm still using the mini binder clips to hold this thing on and they work perfectly well. Actually, I kind of like this solution. Um, binder clips are super handy. So let's look at making my print bed less warped. There's two tools you're gonna need for this, a fairly reliable straight edge and a feeler gauge. Now the thickness of gauge that I used was 0.1 millimeters or four thousandths of an inch because of a couple of reasons. One, 0.1 millimeters is, um, it's about half a uh, build layer height for a 3D printer because the standard layer height is 0.2 millimeters. Um, so as long as you're within 0.1 millimeters on your first layer, you should be pretty good. Um, and trying to get thinner than this is just a lot more work. So I think this is the, the best way to go. And keep in mind that this material is rigid enough that it will span imperfections in the bed, so long as you get it globally flat. So up front here, the bed is, is very flat. It's almost perfect. But over here was the worst. Um, and right now, I have it so that the point one will not fit under. However, there still is a bit of a gap there. And if I go under in this area, there's still a gap. But between this area and this area, this is still, again, it's rigid enough to span that gap without any major deflection. So I have several layers built up, kind of just, you know, feeling out where things are. I could probably put another piece right here. In fact, I probably will after this video. Um, and that will span this gap. You just want to feel around and wherever it's low, add some tape. This tape right here is just normal aluminum um, tape for like uh, HVAC ducts. And this is the this is stuff is pretty thin. Um, I would recommend against getting the thicker stuff um, because your resolution of how accurate you can map out your surface is going to be a little bit worse. Where this thinner stuff, although you'll have to use more layers, um, will allow you to get you know something that is on the smaller level more flat. For example, this piece you can see I rounded off. That's because over here in this area it's already flat enough, and I didn't want to have just a sharp drop off from. Uh, from where I had the aluminum tape to where I don't have it. So this is a really easy way to fix a warp bed. I mean, you could also just get a thick sheet of glass, but that adds a lot of mass to your Y axis and that will lead to more ringing and it'll make your stepper motors have to work harder. So that's why I like this solution. Um, it's just, it's really simple and elegant and it's very cheap. So next let's look at how you tram the bed. I'm not going to mess up the tram of my bed since I worked so hard to get it all parallel in the first place, but I will show you the process and you should have a fairly good understanding of how it works after that. The first thing I did was I took the what the Z-axis limit switch and I removed it from the machine because I don't really care about where it is right away. I want it out of the way. Then I took all four all four adjusters and ran them up a little bit from where I had them. And that way um, I have movement that I can move up and down. Next, I brought my Z axis down. Do it very gently and slowly. Don't, uh, don't force your stepper motors. And I brought it to, um, to the point where just by hand, I could get a sheet of paper, and this is a, a fairly thin sheet of paper. Actually, this is an old uh, flag version for my symbol um, that I made. And you just move it until it barely touches. And I'm also going to move my X and Y. And then you want it roughly above the center of the adjustment screw. Something else that is important is to make sure that you do not have a little piece of filament hanging out of the extruder. I happen to have that because as it's cooling down, it uh, kind of leaks. So remove that 
otherwise you will get inaccurate and inconsistent results. And for the record, I'm doing this cold. I'm not doing this hot. So bring down your z-axis. until you just feel it drag just a little bit. Um, and you can kind of determine for yourself how much drag you want. You can either have a, a fair amount of drag or just, you know, just barely touching. And I would suggest, as you're doing it initially, have more drag, and then, um, then you'll know for sure that you have good contact with your piece of paper. So, because now, um, your z-axis is just kind of floating on its own. You can bump it up or down, especially down um, if you're pushing on this extruder head a little too much. So just find a, a tool and then gently push it as, as parallel with the x-axis as you can. Then go over here, feel it, and then uh, move the adjuster until it feels as similar to this side as possible. Then Use your tool, go back over to this side, and feel it, all right, go back and forth, I don't know, four or five times, whatever you think it takes to make them feel nearly identical. At that point, move the y-axis to the other end of the bed and repeat that, and make this one feel as similar to this one as you can. Once they feel fairly similar, and you should only have to go back, go, go back and forth again about four or five times, go to the other side and do this side over again. Because as you adjust one, it's going to affect how all of them are. It's not going to affect the adjustment of the other four, but it's going to affect the parallelism between all of them. And then go back here. And then what I do is instead of going from left to right, I will measure, I will try and even out from front to back and try and make these two equal and then those two equal. Once all four feel the same, and this should maybe only take you at most five minutes, then go to the center and see how the center feels. It should feel, um, it should feel the same as all the other ones if you have a flat build surface. In my case, even with this FR4, the center is a little bit firmer than the corners. But I'm willing to accept that because on a first layer, a little bit more squish in my opinion, is more acceptable than um, than the extruder nozzle being too far away from the build surface and getting a weak or, you know, um, an under-extruded first layer. I'd rather have it over-extruded than under-extruded. From there, I, would, I then reinstalled the limit switch for the Z-axis so that it just barely clicked where I had the Z-axis... Um, positioned for where I leveled it. After that, I then made sure that I wasn't going to have any crashes, so I removed the binder clip on this corner, and I had it auto home with wherever I set this. In fact, I'm just going to power up the machine and have it auto home and show you how I did the process of leveling the bed again with accounting for the limit switch. So I'm going to go into the menu here, go to prepare, Go to Auto Home. The Z-axis will now be slightly higher or lower than you initially had it when you did that first bed leveling. So the print nozzle should still be parallel with the entire print bed but it will have a Z offset either up or down based on where you put your limit switch. So now what you want to do is go back into prepare and go to the menu um, that says move axis. And you want to move your Z axis up by let's just say one millimeter. You should hear it unclick the limit switch. So now you know that your nozzle will for sure be above the print surface so you're not going to have a crash. Now you just go into moving your Y axis. You can use the coarse 10 millimeter setting. And bring it so that it's above this first 
this first adjustment screw and we're going to move the X. Okay. And now there should be plenty of room for your piece of paper to go under. So now go back to your Z offset. Or not the Z offset. You go back to the move axis for Z and go to the 0.1 millimeter setting. And can bring it down until it's 0.2 millimeters off the bed and make sure that it's still not going to crash into the build plate. Go down to 0.1, you should still have room. Once it hits zero, you should hear the limit switch click. At this point, you should have the same amount of drag as you did before. If you don't, if it's more or less than it was before, adjust this foot, adjust this adjusting screw, and then through the, the UI here, adjust the entire bed to be re-leveled with the new Z height that you have from your limit switch. And that's all it takes. Now, once you do that and you go through all four corners again, and then double check in the center, you should have it completely trammed in. The reason why you want to do this twice, or why I think it's important to do it twice, is that doing it manually um, by moving the axes by hand is a lot faster than having to fiddle, ar fiddle around in the menus. Then, once you've reinstalled your limit switch, and it'll be off slightly, at least you've got all the screws very, very close to where they're going to end up in the final adjustment. So with this information, you should be able to fix your warped bed and level out the entire build surface. Once you do that, all of your prints should start turning out like this. This is a maker coin that I just made today. Um, I figured I'd throw my hat in the ring for maker coins. I just put the channel logo in. And this was, was fairly easy to make. Um, I'll actually link a video in the description from Angus of Maker's Muse out of Australia. And he has an awesome video tutorial on how to make these. Um, they're very simple. And if you're looking for an easy first project to do in CAD, I, I'd recommend this. This is cool in it. You can make a, you know your own customized and or personalized coin. Another thing that I think... Uh, is important about making sure your build surface is level and flat is it gives you a lot more confidence in the machine to put down that first layer so you're not having to watch with eagle eyes where it's putting it down and then have it not be right and wonder hmm is it will my part lift off the bed because when you're printing something that's taller like this if there's enough drag on the top of the part as the extruder is going by it can pull this off and then you're going to, you know, if you're not watching your machine, you're going to end up with some 3D printer spaghetti. Look up on Google Images 3D printer spaghetti. It is not something you want to have. So I think that's all I have for today. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about leveling or flattening your build plate. Uh, it's really a simple process if you just, you know, set yourself a cup of coffee off to the side and take your time. Uh, rushing through this is not going to help you. Just get yourself your feeler gauge, a nice straight edge, metal is preferable to plastic, and uh, a thin piece of paper. Um, thicker office paper will work, but uh, the thinner the better, I think, as long as it's not tissue paper. And of course, some duct tape. And uh, that's, I mean, it's really simple. So, until next time, see ya.